we are here with Mr. Jeffrey Pell. So it's an honor that you want to speak to us today. Um, I want to start by asking you about your part of the Liberation Route Europe, the route we try to keep alive for, for young generations. You were there yourself uh, 75 years ago. Can you tell us a little bit, take us on your part of the Liberation Route, what you experienced? Yes, I was with the uh, 29th Armed Brigade, 11th Armored Division, and it was one of Montgomery's divisions, especially trained in England for a number of years in preparation for an advance from a bridgehead. So they had the foresight, I presume, to do this design of a division well ahead. And that's what we did. We didn't land in Normandy until D6 or 7 and didn't go into action for quite a few later, a few, um, few days later after obviously all forming in, in, in Normandy and subsequently we, we were involved in all the breakthroughs, uh, attempted breakthroughs around Caen until the final uh, advance through Falais Gap. Uh, the most um, memorable part was the fighting around Hill 112 when the, the brigade and division lost many, many tanks. And I had the fortunate or unfortunate, whichever way you like to say it, being in an observation tank. I was a commander of a tank with a wooden gun. And we went, when we went into action, I had an artillery officer and we were behind the forward troops, watched the horror that was going on. We were vulnerable, but not so vulnerable as the guys well ahead. Uh, and uh, other than a mortar bomb landing on the tank and my tank put out of action, which was a bit frightening. We were all black and lost, lost all my, all our uh, bedding on the back. But we, it was only a few days later, we had a new tank with a wooden gun and back in action. Uh, so the Hill 112 was probably the most memorable. And then, of course, following on from that was the, the joy of um, an advance through France and uh, into Belgium. And uh, the welcome we received was absolutely fantastic. Another memory, which could be humorous, I suppose, was the French were throwing camembert cheeses at us. Some, of, some, <laughs> some we were able to retrieve. And unfortunately, some fell into the engine compartment at the back. And we had camembert cheeses um, up our noses for the rest of the war. Of course, we kept our same tanks. Uh, even after uh, hoping to get new ones, but it was thwarted from the, Ar from the Ardennes battle, which I can come to in good time if you wish. But um, the next highlight, of course, was we were the first tanks into Antwerp. The 29th Armed Brigade are in fact honoured by having their tank. It's not the right tank, but no matter, and General Roberts' is, uh, plaque is there, and the, 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 the bull, the black bull, um, I'm trying to think of the name, Taurus Pursuant, uh, is shown on that, on that tank in Antwerp, which people honour year by year, and I have been to Antwerp for a number of years now. Last time was five years ago though. And now you're here again, 75th well, commemorations. I was hoping I might make it in my 96th year and uh, it's delightful to be here and uh, I think I'm going to enjoy these few days. And a lot of people will attend these few days. Eh? There's a lot to, to, there are exhibitions, people are coming here. Um, 
what and, and we talk a lot about liberation these days but also freedom eh, and the meaning of freedom because you and eh, a lot of others fought for it so hard yeah. what would be an important message from you to the people who travel along these important places to learn about history about the freedom and the and the vulnerability also of the freedom we have today well m my education which is a good education but I learnt nothing, even though my father was in the First World War and had a very honourable time. I never found out from him or I wasn't taught at school in 19, when I went to school in what would have been, uh, I suppose, 1930 for the secondary schooling. We never were taught about the the World War One, nor the reasons and what happened. Uh, our, our history was, I suppose, traditional, um, the kings and queens of England sort of thing. But that was just my education, and my feeling is keep educating the children who, from my experience of these last few years, are wonderful and, and most interested and excitable about uh, the, the history. So uh, keep it going and I think Normandy is a good example uh, of how to show off the, the Second World War history which is so well signed and, and uh, museums. Are, uh, it's an open air museum. Exactly, exactly. So my message is to keep on with that type of thing. So, good. Thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you. <laughs> we are here with Mrs. Julian Pulser, the wife of Mr. Geoffrey Pulser we just talked to. Um, thank you for, for speaking with us. Um, you grew up in wartime Antwerp. Can you tell us what your main memories are of growing up in wartime Antwerp? Um, well, I don't really know. Um, as, well, I, I've written it down here. I mean, we had a normal life, but my, my father was an invalid, so my mother was a breadwinner. Uh, so we really didn't um, we didn't go out very much. I mean, I went to school in uh, in Antwerp. Uh, when I went there, I think I had difficulty because I didn't really speak any Flemish, so I had to start right from the word go. Uh, to learn the language. Um, I mean, our entertainment was mostly done by... My mother was a very good pianist, so she, enjoy, she enjoyed having friends. One, was, one was a, played a violin, somebody else sang. And, and I think we probably spent most of our time out of that room, because I think it was uh, for the adults. The only outings we had, really, was going to the... Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, Nightingale Park. Park. <laughs> On a Sunday, we had to dress up. That's right. And if, I mean, I never went to the cinema. Um, we did very little because I say my my mother was a breadwinner. She made all our clothes, either knitted it, um, and um, somehow uh, we didn't really notice too much of the. Um, we used to go down the cellar. You know when they, when all the bombs were coming down, uh, but apart from that, uh, we did very little. And how did you met Mr. Pulser? Well, um, when we went to England, I mean, I was then 15, so I, I went to a Flem uh, an English school, but I couldn't really uh, follow the curriculum, so I, t I went to another school. From there. Um, I'm, I'm much better at um, anything mathematic rather than writing or reading. So I did a course on, in England you call a contometer, whereas now it's a computer. And the first job I had, I applied to go to Shell, uh, where Jeff was working. And um, apparently when I worked, walked into the room, he said, oh, there's a Belgian girl going to. There were only two girls among about 50 men, I think. And um, at that time, I mean, just as he liberated me, but at that time I had a different boyfriend, 
when he did his national service, I met Jeff and that's how we came together. And he told, well, he's probably told you that he, he thought he liberated me. <laughs> I mean, when we, um, when we uh, were liberated in Antwerp, we entertained the British soldiers. They came to our flat. Um, I used to uh, live in Lange Lausanne Straat. Do you know it? No, no, no. no. Uh, and I mean, the, uh, Jeff's keen to go and have a look at it, but there's nothing to see because we were three floors up uh, uh, above a greengrocer shop. Uh, so there was nowhere to play. Uh, all we did was doing some skipping in the road. <laughs> um, so, uh, no. So uh, my mother was still keen. I mean, my mother's British. My father's Belgium. She's still keen to come back to England. That's but then we had this catastrophe. Um, my mother went to the British Embassy to see we, whether we could come into England, and they mentioned there was one ship leaving Antwerp, uh, women and children only. So uh, we, my father agreed that we could, three of us could go, and he would follow the next day via stand. But of course then we were bombed, the Germans bombed us and um, we lost, lost everything, all our belongings. Um, my sister, who was 18 months older than myself, uh, wouldn't go into another uh, boat, so we walked in Antwerp to go home until a gentleman picked us up by car and took us home. Uh, originally, the Jews had to sit at the back of the bus, and then eventually they wore uh, like a, a, a pink uh, colour here, and after a few days, you never saw any of them all taken away. This is our ship uh, when we left Antwerp. I mean the uh, Germans machine gunned us for a couple of hours uh, so we all had to... Yeah she's slightly injured because I think one of the staircases broke down uh, but that was the ship and we, we were all saved by I think some of the um, crew were trying to get back into the back into the boat to, to release their friends, but my mother insisted on she was rowing the boat for us to get get out of the way. This was the boat.